Welcome Clarity Coders. In today's video, I wanna talk about one of the problems you're gonna run into when you're working with PyTorch and neural networks and machine learning in general, and that is your computing power. If you have a high-end computer with a GPU, you're gonna be able to run these calculations quick and easy on your local computer with PyTorch, but I wanted this series to be accessible by anyone, no matter what type of computer you're using. So for the rest of this video, I'm gonna use Google Colab. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to set up Colab and start running on the shared Google CPU and GPU. So what Colab is, is exactly that. It's basically a Jupyter notebook kind of environment that allows you to run on Google's cloud server. So what you're gonna need is a Google account. So if you don't have a Google account, I want you to go ahead and sign up for one of those if you wanna follow along. I'm gonna go ahead and sign into mine. So once you sign up and log into your Google account, you can access the Colab in a couple different ways. If you go to myaccount.google.com, you can see all your apps here like Gmail, Drive, like you would typically expect. And you probably don't see Colab in here. So you can actually click on the more apps and you can search for Colab and you can open it up from here. After that's done, you should be all ready to go. Mine might look a little different because it is a business account that I'm using here, but the idea is the same. It's a free add-on, so no worries there. Now you should be able to access the Colab by going to colab.research.google.com. And this will pull you up to this intro page here where you can create no new notebooks, work with files just like you normally would. You can see you can get to your Google Drive, GitHub, a bunch of other different things here. So we're gonna go ahead and try and set up our example from last time. I'm just gonna click on new notebook. If you've never worked with Jupyter Notebooks, I'm not a huge fan of Jupyter Notebooks, but in this environment, it kind of makes sense. So we're gonna go ahead and give it a shot here. You have code windows and you can also have text windows. So you can enter some text. kind of explaining what you're doing and different things like that. And then you can also have code blocks. And in these code blocks, you can run the individual blocks of code. So I'm gonna pull over the imports that we did from last time, and I'm gonna go ahead and run that block. And you can see that ran here. And then I can go ahead and click the plus button here and grab another code block below and type in my next block of code. Now, why don't I put my whole program in a single block? Jupyter Notebook, this environment kind of allows us to break up our code. So if we wanna rerun chunks of code, we don't have to rerun everything again. You can see here that I've done my import I probably don't want to do those again, so I can leave that alone for the rest of this example. Now, if you leave this notebook idle long enough, it will actually disconnect and you'll have to rerun from top to bottom again. So keep that in mind. If you have any errors, maybe start rerunning each block from the top to bottom again. I'm going to paste in our network and I'm going to run that block as well. You can also hit control enter. I'm gonna have a block to pull in our data like we did last time and set a train and a test set. I'm gonna hit control enter again. And you can see that it downloaded our data. This is the loop that we're using to train our network. And I've added one function here and that's the TQDM. And you can see I just wrapped it so what that's gonna do, it's gonna give us a nice little progress bar and show us how fastly this code, how fastly, and show us how fast this code is executing. And to use this, we're actually gonna do one more import up top here. So we'll add that, I'll run this cell again. And now you can see that my numbers have changed. See this four, that means that I just recently ran that. Everything else is still run in order here. And I'm gonna go ahead and train our network with that one change that we had there. And let's go ahead and do five epochs just because we're on a faster server now. And you can see now our training is completed. Now this may be faster or it may be slower than your local computer. You're gonna have to, it's gonna depend on your system. But right now we're working on the CPU, remember. So let's go ahead and add a line up here and try to take advantage of Google's GPU. So I'm gonna do this up top in our machine learning programs and I'm gonna check to see if we have a GPU available. So you can see here that I'm just doing a little if statement to check to see if CUDA is available. If it's available, that means we have a GPU that we can run on. And I'm gonna have it acknowledge that by just printing out GPU. If we don't have one available, it's gonna just print out uh, CPU. So we know that we're on the CPU. So if I run this, you can see that I am on Google CPU right now. So what we can do 
is under runtime. We can change the runtime type and we can switch to GPU or TPU. We'll talk about TPU a little bit later. It's a special tensor processing unit. So we can work with that a little bit as we move forward. But right now we're gonna stick with GPU. Now, depending on the time, this is a shared resource. So these might not be available if there's no space left on the GPU for you to execute your program. So if you don't see this, you can just try again another time and it will probably be available. So I'm gonna pick GPU. And you can see you got a little warning, don't use the GPU unless you're using the GPU. We're gonna go ahead and save that. And now if I run this code here again, you can see now that we're on the GPU and we've also defined a device here. So now we can pass calculations to the GPU and run them on the GPU instead of running them on the CPU. So now if I scroll down, we have to tell PyTorch what we want to add to the GPU. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna pass our entire network up to the GPU. So I'm gonna add a line called to device, dot to, sorry, I'm gonna add a method call, called dot to, and then I'm gonna pass in the device that we defined above. That device in this case is the GPU. So we're passing our entire network up there. Now when we do calculations, if our network is up there, we also have to pass our data to the GPU as well. So we're gonna also pass, make sure our image is stored on the device and our output is stored on the device as well. So these are both gonna be on the GPU. Now, what happens if we forget one of these? Whoops, I forgot an important part. <laughs> so when we switch over to the GPU, all these, it's a different runtime environment. So our code blocks are no longer, they haven't been run now. So I'm gonna just go ahead and run this from top to bottom again. We're on the GPU, we're gonna define our network. I'm gonna load our data back. Now I can run this. Remember, I intentionally am leaving the two device off of the output, just to show you what kind of error we'll get here. And you can see that we're getting an error because it's as part of it on the CPU and part of it on the GPU. So just watch out for that error. You can see that expected object of device type CUDA, but got device type of CPU. So let's go ahead and make sure, so we passed our image to the device, let's also pass our output to the device, and then our network can calculate it from there. I think that's all we have to do. Let's try and run this again. And you can see here now we finished. This is again, it's it's faster on my computer, but you know, it could differ. Maybe it's, maybe you're better off to stay on your local PC, or maybe it's better for you to jump on the collab. So you'll have to kind of make that decision for yourself. But this is gonna give us a spot where all of us can run our code in a reasonably fast rate, as long as you have an inter internet connection and can work remotely like that. Just because I'm in collab for the rest of this series doesn't mean you have to. If it's faster on your local PC, stay there. So just to finish this up real quick, I'm just gonna paste in the other chunks from our last examples, and I'm gonna show you how to upload a document as well. So that was our training example. Let's then test our network. And I'm pasting this code in as well. And you can see it threw an error, of course, because we also have to put this data to the GPU as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and set image equal to image dot two device and output equal to output dot two device. Try and run this again. And you can see it gives us our accuracy back of 97%, which is about what we would expect. And now I'm gonna show you how you can pull a file. Remember, we tested our network afterwards. We pulled in our own image to see if it could get it correct. So how do we work with files on Google Colab? You have a lot of options. The one that I'm gonna show you here is just pulling it from your Google Drive, which makes sense. So we're gonna go to drive.google.com. And over here, you can go new, file upload, and you can upload anything you would like. I'm going to upload this little test image that we created. Cool, so we got that up there. Now we can close out of that. Now how do we get to that image here? We're gonna go ahead and mount that drive first. So you can see in this code snippet, I'm using google.colab, I'm importing drive, and then I'm actually mounting my drive. So I'm gonna do drive.mount content slash G drive. I'm also gonna add in one argument here. This will be useful from time to time. I'm gonna say force remount equals true. So that means if I rerun this code, even if my drive's already mounted, it's gonna remount it, force it to remount the drive, which is gonna give me any new files. So if I'm rerunning this code for some reason, I'm assuming that I've added something to my Google Drive and I want Google to be able to see that, or I wanna be able to use that in my program. I'm gonna go ahead and set force remount equal to true. And then I'm gonna go ahead and run this. 
try a slash in front there. And you can see here that I have to authorize this. So I'm gonna go to this URL. It's gonna give me a code and I'm gonna paste that code in here. So let's open up this URL. I have to sign in with your account, allow. Then you'll get your code. You can copy that code and then paste it right into your notebook. Hit enter and you can see that you've mounted your drive. Now we can list the direct or we can list what's inside our drive by using ls. Don't forget the exclamation point in front of it and then you can navigate to your drive. So I'm going to do content slash g drive and you can see there's only one folder inside of it, my drive. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to rerun this code except this time I'm going to use my drive as well. So now we're inside my drive. And here you can see some of the files that I have in there, including our test.png. Awesome. So now I'm just going to grab our test code from before. You can see I'm importing the image just like we did before. I'm going into Google Drive instead this time. So I'm using that same path from before, using my file name, all that. All the conversions are still the same. And let's try and run this. And you can see, just like before, we have to add our objects to device, just like we did. So right here, I'm just gonna go to device, rerun this, and you can see it works as expected. It guessed a five, it does look like a five, and that is it. We're gonna cut this video off right here. I wanna thank everyone for watching these videos, subscribing and liking the videos, it means a lot. If you wanna to talk to me directly, any problems you have, join our Discord. We always have someone online that's kind of working through stuff together and helping each other out. In the next video, we're gonna move forward and start processing bigger data sets. It's gonna be fun. Until next time, keep coding.